Hey everyone! Welcome back to Megan Grace DIY for another tutorial. Today's video is going to show you how to make an adorable vintage gathered apron. A gathered apron is a great project for a beginner or an advanced sewer alike. Not only can you make one for yourself, but you can make them as gifts for all of your friends. Also, if you're looking to get into any kind of costume design, a gathered apron is seen very often in 1950s clothing or in a lot of the Disney princess costumes. In my tutorial, I'm going to show you how to add a curved pocket as well as some lace trimming to the outside of the apron, but both of those things are optional. Let's talk about supplies. For the main apron, I used two thirds of a yard of the print. For the waistband, I used a 60 inch by four inch strip. I also used a five and a half by seven inch wide piece for the pocket, two and a half yards of my trim, and then scissors and thread. Let's talk about my fabric for a second. I had no idea I could customize my print at joannes.com to make it look like my puppy. So I ordered this special and I did a separate video on how you could order your own fabric customized to look like your puppy. The faces on the print are pretty large, so I want to include three rows of faces, so my apron's going to be 20 inches long. But if you wanted to make yours longer or shorter, be my guest. We're starting off this apron by cutting a rectangle. Now I already mentioned I'm making mine 20 inches long, but how wide should I make it? I generally say you should measure your waist and that should be how wide your apron rectangle should be. So for example, my dress form's waist is about 30 inches. Now I want my apron to be a little bit fuller in the gathers, so I'm just gonna use the full width of my fabric, which is 45 inches. But you can make that number bigger or smaller depending on what style apron you'd like to make. Since this fabric is a custom print, I've got a wide white stripe on each side, so I'm cutting off about an inch at my salvage edge, bringing my total width to 43 inches. Now, if you're not keeping track of these numbers, that's okay. I've got a document in the description section below that includes the pattern piece for the pocket I'm going to use as well as directions on how to figure out exactly what shape and what measurements you want your rectangle to be. My rectangle's finished measurements were 20 inches long by 43 inches wide and just FYI I've also pre-washed and dried my fabric. Now our first sewing step is going to be applying a rolled hem to both of the short size as well as the long bottom edge. A rolled hem is when you take the edge of the fabric and fold it over once and then fold it over again and stitch it in place. Usually my folds are anywhere from 3 eighths of an inch to half an inch. Now if you've never done a rolled hem before and you aren't quite sure what to do, I've got a separate back to basics video that shows you up close in detail how to complete a rolled hem. Not everybody needs to prep before performing a rolled hem, but I'm going to recommend that you press your rolled hem in place. I think it makes your rolled hem come out much crisper and cleaner in the end. I'm also going to prep my waistband strip by taking it and folding it half the long ways and I'm going to press that fold in place. Whether you're new to my videos or you've been with me for a long time, you'll know one of my biggest pieces of advice is always press your projects. Make sure you're pressing all your steps along the way. Don't wait till the very end. I promise you it'll make a huge difference in the overall quality of your project. With our pressing complete, we're gonna go over to the sewing machine and stitch down our rolled hem. Our stitching is gonna be a straight stitch with a length of three. And our goal is to stitch right along that inner fold. You don't want your stitching to creep to the outside. You wanna make sure you stay right on top of that fold. When I get to the corner, I'm gonna stop at the fold line for the bottom hem. I'm gonna sink my needle and turn 90 degrees. And then before continuing to sew the bottom hem, I'm gonna back stitch to the outside and then move forward. So that way the corners of the apron are nice and flat. Once the corner is secured, you can continue along the bottom hem and then you're gonna do the same exact thing in the second corner and continue up the side hem. And then your rolled hem should be completed. Now that you've completed your rolled hem, it's time to attach the lace. I'm taking the top edge of my lace and lining it up with the very right side edge of my apron. I'm gonna do a top stitch at a length of three to attach that lace all the way down the side. When you get to the corner with your lace, we're gonna do something a little bit special here. If you see me try to turn the lace and go across the bottom of my apron, the corner gets all weird and it doesn't lay or look nice. So we're gonna do something called mitering the corner. And how you're gonna do that is you're gonna fold the lace the way I'm folding it and extend it out to the right hand side, then fold it back on top of itself going towards the bottom hem of the apron. Now at this point, you could just top stitch that piece of lace down, but I'm gonna pin it in place so I've got that fullness in the corner. I'm gonna push the fullness through to the back side of the apron. 
Then I'm gonna make a diagonal from the corner of the apron where the fabric is out to the point of the lace. So basically I'm sewing a diagonal line to pull that fullness towards the back. And when I flip it towards the front, I'm gonna have a lovely flat corner to my apron. Now in case that was confusing, here's the actual sewing of that mitered corner. I'm going from the corner where the fabric is out to the point of the lace at a 45 degree angle. You're not gonna cut the fabric off. Later on when we're doing a final press of the iron, we're gonna push that fabric to one side and it's gonna lay beautifully around the corner of your apron. Now doesn't that look so lovely and so much nicer than just pulling the lace around the corner? It's these little touches, these little things that you slow down to take care of that will make your projects just look mwah, chef's kiss. Once you've got your corner mitered, you're ready to go and sew the rest of the lace across the bottom of the apron. You're gonna repeat this mitering step when you get to the second corner of your apron on the other side. Before we step away from the machine to work on our pocket, we're gonna insert a basting stitch across the unfinished edge of our apron. A basting stitch is when you sew a straight line with your length turned all the way up and you don't back stitch at either end creating a knot. I complete my basting stitches from the middle of the item outwards. So you're gonna start at the center of your rectangle and you're gonna sew your basting stitch out towards the ends. I do two rows of basting stitches as you can see here. So that way you get a really nice tight gather. Let's transfer our attention over to the pocket for a moment. You're gonna need a five and a half by seven inch piece of fabric and the pocket pattern is located in the description section below. My demonstration today includes a rounded pocket, but if you'd like to use a square patch pocket or a V patch pocket, by all means, use whatever pocket you feel would satisfy your inner designer. Once you've got your pocket cut out, you're gonna complete a rolled hem across the top line that's not gonna be sewn onto the apron or basically the opening of the pocket. After completing the rolled hem on top, I'm gonna to take a small piece of lace, the same lace I used for the outside and decorate the top of the pocket. After you stitch the lace to the top, you're gonna do a stay stitch around the entire curve of the pocket. So from the top opening around the U-curve to the other side of the top opening. This stay stitch should be no more in than a quarter inch from the edge. We're gonna use that stay stitch as our guide to roll the sides of the pocket in and press them down. Now here's the trick to make sure the bottom of the pocket stays nice and rounded. You're gonna take a pin and you're gonna pull one side of the thread very gently on a couple different spots in the U-shaped bottom. You're gonna just slightly gather in the fabric. You're not doing a full on gather like we're gonna do at the actual top of the apron. You're gonna use it just enough to pull the fabric to the inside of the pocket and keep a nice round shape on the outside and then press it in place. To place my pocket, I measured six inches down from the top and six inches from the side, and that's where I landed the top left-hand corner. Of course, you can place your pocket wherever you would like, but I kind of like them higher up on one side. Let's head back over to the machine where we're gonna top stitch our pocket onto our apron. I'm using the same color thread, but if you wanted to use a contrasting thread here, it would look really nice. When you're stitching the tops of the pocket at the start of your stitching and the end of your stitching, I don't want you to back stitch. You're gonna leave the tails free and then you're gonna take your apron out from the machine and you're gonna actually pull both of your start threads to the back of the apron. Then you're gonna tie them together in a knot. This way you don't have any ugly weird back stitching at the top of your pocket. And here's a view of that step from the inside of the apron. I pulled the front piece of thread through to the back using my seam ripper, and I'm gonna just tie them in a knot with my fingers and trim the threads once I'm done. Again, this is just one of those small touches that makes your project look really professional in the end. With your pocket completed, it's time to move on to lining up the waistband with the body of the apron. I want you to put a clip in the very middle of your waistband and in the middle of your apron. From the clip in the center of your waistband, I measured out approximately seven inches, but to get this number, you're gonna divide your waist measurement in half and then in half again. And that's how far out from the center of the waistband you're going to mark. This mark is where you want your apron to stop going around your waist. So if you want your apron to cover more of the front of your body, you can make this measurement a little larger. If you want it to be more centered in the front, you can make this measurement a little bit smaller. Take the clips you made at center front for both the apron and the waistband, line them up and pin them together. 
The next things you're gonna pin in place are the edges of the apron rectangle aligned with the two marks that you just made about seven inches away from center front. Don't expect the waistband and the apron piece to line up right now. You're gonna have way more fabric in the apron than the waistband, and that's because we haven't done our gathers yet. When you're pinning the waistband to the fabric of the apron, you want your right sides together. So the wrong sides should be facing out. And you don't want your waistband to be folded in half. You want it to be just one piece of fabric pinned to one piece of fabric. Once you've got everything pinned in place, it's time to pull our gathering stitches. If you've never pulled gathering stitches before, the key word here is gentle. We're gonna take the two strings on one end, so the outside of the apron, we're gonna lift them up and we're gonna pull them so the fabric scrunches together. And you wanna do this a little bit at a time. If you pull too hard, your threads will break and then you'll have to re-stitch your gathering stitches. If you try to take threads from both sides of the fabric, pulling the threads will not gather the fabric. You have to stay on one side. So basically on one side, the strings will get quite a bit longer while the strings on the other side remain the same length. And you're going to gently push those gathers towards the center. When you get to the point where the fabric is almost scrunched into the length of the waistband, you wanna take the free threads in the center and tie them in a knot to make sure that your gathers don't slip out the other end. Once you've pulled the fabric to be the same length as the waistband, take your fingers and just gently push the gathers to make sure they're even across that length. And once you've got them even, we're gonna pin the gathers in place. Once you've pinned all of your gathers in place on one side and are satisfied with how they look, go ahead and repeat all these steps on the other side of the apron. You also wanna make sure that you don't have a gap in the middle, that you have a little bit of gathering in the middle so the gathering looks cohesive and smooth across the entire front of the apron. Now we're ready to sew our gathers in place. We're gonna be stitching at a half inch seam allowance with the gathers facing up. The way I make sure I don't get any big puckers in my gathering is I'll gently pull the left side away from the needle. That way there's some tension and I can see if I've got any type of big puckers coming up and I can fix them before I go over them with my needle. Pins can also get hidden very easily in your gathers, so just be careful. Make sure you go nice and slow when you're sewing your gathers down so you don't accidentally sew over any of your pins. When I stitched the lace on the sides of the apron, I left a little bit extra hanging on the top, so that way it could very cleanly get trapped into the waistband as I'm doing right here. Now that I'm done with the sewing of the gathering, I can trim the tops of that lace as well as trim off all those extra threads for my basting. Once you're done cleaning up all the excess threads, this is what the gathering sewn to the waistband should look like, nice and even and clean. Our apron is really starting to take shape now and we've only got a few steps left. Take the waistband fabric and fold it back on itself so the wrong side of the fabric is facing towards you. You wanna fold the waistband back along the same line that we made at the beginning of the video, even though it'll be going in the opposite direction. This helps make sure that you're lining up the edges evenly. Pin the waistband folded in this position and make sure the lace is laying flat and you don't have any weird bumps or anything in the way. I'm going to place pins horizontally down the entire length of the waist tie to prepare to sew the waist tie closed. When you place the waist tie underneath the needle to sew, you wanna make sure that the needle is lined up with the end of the seam attaching the apron to the waistband. Otherwise, you'll get some weird gapping and it just won't look as nice. Bring your pinned waist ties over to the sewing machine and sew each waist tie closed all the way down its length at a half inch seam allowance with a stitch length of three. When you've got about two inches left in the waist tie, you're gonna sink your needle and sew the rest closed at a 45 degree angle. This will give you a nice finishing point at the edge of the waist tie. Before we're ready to flip the waist tie right side out again, we're gonna cut off that extra fabric on the outside of the 45 degree angle. When I teach sewing one, I notice that my students tend to have a couple of different sticking points. And for some reason, flipping tubes right side out tends to be one of those sticking points. Now, because this is a closed end tube, we can't slide anything through it to help us turn it right side out. You're basically just gonna have to stick your finger in the hole and get some traction and pull the fabric outwards. To get the end of your tie nice and pointy, you can either use a point turner or a pair of scissors that don't have a super sharp tip to them. Press those waist ties nice and flat. Now to prepare for the last sewing step of our project. We're gonna cover up that gathering seam allowance by slip stitching the open end of the waistband on top of it. 
take the free edge of the waistband fabric and press it folded a half an inch towards that gathered seam. Then fold the waistband towards the gathers along the same line that we pressed in place at the beginning of the tutorial. Once you're satisfied with its alignment, pin it in place. We're gonna close the remaining open seam using a slip stitch, otherwise known as the tunnel and bite technique. If you've never done a slip stitch before, I've also got a separate video linked above on how to complete a slip stitch. But basically, you're gonna slide your needle through the tunnel, which is the folded fabric laid on top of the gathers, and then take a small bite out of the gather side. Repeat this all the way across the open portion of the waistband. Now, before we can call this art, we're gonna do a little final pressing along the waistband to make sure it's one nice continuous line. We're gonna put a little bit of heat and steam on top of our gathers to set them in place. And then we're also gonna press those corners that we mitered at the very beginning of the tutorial nice and flat. And that's all there is to this tutorial. I hope you found this project easy to follow as well as enjoyable to complete. Just a reminder before you click away that if you aren't subscribed to my channel, I would totally love if you hit the subscribe and the notify button. And you can also check me out on Pinterest and Instagram. And one of the most amazing things that you guys can do if you've done one of my projects is to tag me in pictures on any of your social media platforms. Then I get to see your finished work and I get to really know that my videos are helping people because I don't get to see that that often. And it makes me really, really happy. So I certainly hope to see you again over at Megan Grace DIY and as always happy sewing.